My name is Bernie Krause, and I'm a soundscape ecologist. I record animals, large and small, all over the world, marine and terrestrial. And I'm here today because uh, I've got an exhibit called the Great Animal Orchestra at the Biennale. The Great Animal Orchestra has been taken from excerpts that I've recorded over the last 54 years. It began in 1968. And this collection really is an important collection because it can show over time how the world of sound has changed because of global warming, because of human endeavor, and all kinds of other reasons as well. But it also shows what incredible beauty there is in the natural world of a particular component that we usually don't think about because we're a visual culture. So we're thinking about and we're realizing this work through sound now. And these soundscapes are supported by graphic elements called spectrograms. And these are graphic illustrations of the sound that you'll see streaming across these screens, almost like a video movie. One element that we have in our work is an element called Kilometer 41, which is taken from the Amazon River. What's really neat about this piece is the um, is the projections on the opera house sails of the images of this river as they sound, not as they look, but as they sound to the human ear. One of the things that we've tried to do here is to create a sense of importance of sound. And where usually in film, sound is, is the last thing that's ever added to a film. But now things are changing. And one of the things that we're doing in this exhibit is using graphics to support the sound. The sound is the most important component here. And you'll realize that when you see these wonderful exhibits. The Great Animal Orchestra is a transformational piece because what we've done here, and what I've done, is taken uh, examples from my collection of scientific data and transformed them into works of art. And my idea of art is to take, create uh, performances of wonder from my archive that I want others to experience and see and hear. And elements of life-affirming soundscapes that really make you feel good. Many years ago, I came to uh, Sydney and Australia to work up in Daintree and also on the Coral Reef. And when I was in Sydney, which is where we, we landed at first, I spent some time around, uh, traveling around Sydney and looking at spaces. I thought I would want to see the, the soundscapes projected. Uh, I really had the thought then, and this was 1989, it would be really neat to have these soundscapes somehow projected on the opera house sails. But all we had was sound then. We didn't have the graphics to do that. We didn't know really how to do that. So kind of that, that idea kind of went away. But as time has progressed, we've got now the, the ways to, to uh, take sound and show it graphically. A lot of this work that I've done was transformed into large format pieces. And it couldn't have been done without the help of a group in the UK called United Visual Artists and Matt Clark and his team. And we have here an example of a way in which the graphic elements of, this, of these soundscapes have been made really powerful. We never really filmed sounds in the Amazon. We recorded them. And, um, and I never even thought about a graphic component to it. And I never take photographers with me because they always make a lot of noise. They're moving around, they're shooting it for an angle. You know, they're trying to get light. I mean, all of these things that, that are really disturbing to a sound person when you're trying to record. Because you gotta learn to be really quiet. So the Amazon recordings that I've got, uh, they're resonant. They make you, f they're the kinds of sounds that like all of the other sounds are very life affirming. And they're the kinds of sounds you want to hear. The, these expressions 
These soundscapes are narratives of place, and they, for me, express a collection of stories that go back millennia because they're so ancient, they're atavistic, and these expressions are as valuable as the Library of Alexandria. Things we need to know, information we need to have. All we have to do is learn to listen. These sounds are cueing us about our relationship to the natural world now. And one of the things that I show in this exhibit is the evolution of sound as it's occurred in our place where we live in California over a period of 11 years from a robust soundscape to a silent spring. And I show that in one minute and it's really impressive. You gotta see this because it's gonna make a change in your life.